Welcome to the third video in this series on using Substance 3D Modeler on desktop. This will be an introduction to Scene Assembly, which is moving and arranging elements of your scene. This includes the Select Tool functions and working with multiple layers and groups. So far, we've only been working with the Sculpting tools in a single stationary layer. If you want to move the layer around, you'll need the Select Tool. It's found in the Tool Palette here, or you can switch to it with the V key. First thing to point out is the layer turning blue, which means the layer is selected. When you try to edit the contents of a single layer, it needs to be selected. But when you use sculpting tools on it, you don't want this blue visual. Select tool isn't a sculpting tool, so selections are blue. To deselect, left click in empty space. When a layer is selected, gizmo handles appear around the layer's origin. This will be covered more later, but for now, the first layer's origin is the same as the scene origin. You can move, rotate, scale, and reset the selected layer using these handles. While it's selected, look at the action menu by right-clicking. Here are some options available to the selection, including flip, which is across the scene origin, and delete. You can also delete with the delete key. Editing a layer can be done a couple of ways. First, select it, then switch to any sculpting tool. This will isolate the selection, and you'll only be able to edit what's been selected. Second is through double clicking. This will immediately bring you into editing. You can double click an empty space to exit editing. Third option as a keyboard shortcut is to press S while hovering to edit and Alt S to exit. All right, we wanna make some new layers. There are multiple ways to do this, but to start, open the actions menu. Up here is the new layer option. And it's also found down here on this bottom bar. Selecting it gives you this visual change. Also, there's this colored crosshair visual at the center of the gizmo. This is showing the new layer's origin, which will be placed at the center point of this first piece of clay. This is important, but we'll come back to it. Once you've placed the clay, you can edit it. While editing this current layer, notice how the other layer in the scene is a darker color. If you exit editing, all layers will be shown their correct color values. That's because we're viewing everything at scene assembly. But if you start editing this layer, there is visual focus on the layer being edited and the darker layer can't be sculpted on. Let's make another new layer, this time using Control N. Before adding clay, we'll toggle on mirror symmetry. Notice how now the layer origin visual is snapped to the central plane of the scene. This means that any symmetry layer made will be all lined up on this plane. This is helpful if you want multiple symmetrical layers and want all of their symmetry axes aligned. We're currently editing this first new layer, which did not have symmetry on. A reminder that you can see a quick visual of the layer's origin by keeping the actions menu open. The origin is centered on where the first piece of clay is added, so that symmetry can be turned on later and still have your tools line up directly across the middle. If you make a new layer while currently editing a layer, it will adopt the properties of that layer. In this case, the new layer should already have the same symmetry setting turned on. It will also copy the resolution of the current layer. There is one last way to make a new layer. If you're not editing a layer and no layer is selected, when you switch to the clay tool, Modeler needs a new layer to place that clay into. So if you place some clay down, it will make one for you. Now that there's some more layers in the scene, you can select and interact with multiple layers. This is why it's called assembly or scene assembly, as in, you can assemble the contents of your scene. Multi-select by holding Shift to add to the selection. Or you can press and hold left click and move across all layers you want selected. Any select tool action or property changes will affect everything selected. Remember, you can deselect everything by left clicking in empty space. There is also a few other selection options here in the palette under the select tool, including the option to invert your selection. These also have shortcuts. Control A to select everything, Control Shift A to deselect everything, and Control I to invert the current selection. Often you'll want to make copies of your layers. The simplest way to do this is to duplicate, which can be found here in the Actions menu. It can also be found here at the bottom, or by hitting Control D. It will duplicate anything selected in the exact same place and leave one copy selected. This makes it easy to make small variations in layers. There's also a shortcut to copy layers as well. Press and hold D while something is selected, then move it to drag out a quick copy of a layer or a selection. Easy enough to do a couple times, but if you want to do this even faster, 
press D while moving the gizmo. You can quickly stamp copies of your selection, which can fill up your scene very quickly. With all these layers lying around, you'll want to group them. Do this by selecting the layers you want, open the Actions menu, and group them here. You can also group them down here, or use the shortcut Control G. This group now acts as one unit. You can grab it, move it, scale it, and copy it, just as you would a single layer. To edit the contents of the group, you'll need to enter it or scope into it. Do this by double-clicking, the same way you can quickly edit a layer. You can also enter a group by pressing the S key. Note that everything outside of the group is now darker because the focus is inside the group. Now you can move elements from within the group. To step out or scope out of the group, double-click in empty space. From here, the group can be interacted with as a whole. Groups can also be scoped out of by pressing Alt-S. Currently, if you want to change the contents of a group, you need to ungroup first, which is found here in the Actions menu, and down here below. It can also be done with Control shift g Then you'll need to regroup the selection that you want. In VR, you can quickly add or remove elements of a group without ungrouping, but not yet on desktop. You can make any number of groups, including nested groups. Here, let's make another group within this one. And you edit that group the same way, by scoping into it. Notice here on the bottom bar, there's a path between the scene level and what you're currently editing. When you scope out, you're back in the first group. And when you scope out again, you're back at the scene level. This is a fast way of jumping between groups and nested groups. But you can also scope all the way back out to the scene level by selecting it down below. You can also use the same S key shortcut to quickly jump between editing different layers. You can use it while editing a layer to quickly jump to and edit another layer, without having to exit and select it first. With layers and groups being covered, that helps to explain gizmo orientation. By default, the gizmo follows the orientation of what you're currently editing, so if you're editing clay in a layer, it will orient to the layer's origin when it's reset. In the bottom bar here, there are options to change this so that the orientation is based off the parent, which could be the group the layer is inside, or the scene origin. With complex layers, you'll want to access things that are tucked away without moving them. In the Actions menu, this section gives you the option to show or hide layers. Hide will only affect what is selected. Any layers or groups that are hidden cannot be affected by tools. Show All will make any hidden content visible and leave them selected, so if you want to quickly hide them again, they don't need to be reselected. Both Hide and Show can be used quickly with a shortcut as well. Press H when a selection is active to hide, and H when nothing is selected to show all. Isolate Scope works on the current group or parent of the current layer. So if you're in a group, it will hide everything not in the group, and if you're editing a layer in a group, it will hide everything outside the group it's in. The last thing to cover here is Merge, which can be found in the Actions menu here and also on the bottom bar here. Merge brings every layer or group or combination selected down to a single layer. Merge can be done with Control E. Creating and merging multiple layers is a pretty common workflow. Here you can see several forms created in separate layers, then selectively merging and smoothing. And that will wrap up part three in this series on using Modeler on desktop. Next up in part four, we'll be covering the rest of the sculpting tools available.